I want to read a review of the Glass Castle from a website, The Ripple Effect. The opening of the book grabbed me right away as I was browsing in a bookstore. The author, a successful journalist and writer, was in a taxi, all dressed up for an evening event in New York City. As she glanced out the window, she saw a homeless woman scavenging a garbage bin. The closer look made her realize that was her own mother. This is one dramatic opening of a book. Knowing that it is the telling of a real-life story intrigued me all the more. Since its publication in 2005, the award-winning childhood memoir of Jeanette Walls has garnered, garnered high acclaims and been on the New York Times bestseller list for a hundred weeks. Growing Up Nomadic is a succinct description of Walls' childhood. At age, four, at age four, she had already moved 11 times. Upon the directions, direction of her eccentric father and idealistic mother, and often to escape debt, debts and consequences of misdeeds, the four Walls children were herded across the United States from Arizona to California, across mining towns and even living out open in the Mojave Desert, moving on a whim and often given just minutes to pack up whatever meager possessions they had. Afflicted with alcoholism, Dad, Rex, trouble holding, had, had trouble holding down a job. But he was a man with a brilliant mind and a wealth of knowledge which he readily passed to his favorite daughter, Jeanette. She learned from him science and engineering, mathematics and history. The glass castle is his promise to her assuring her one day he would strike gold with the prospector he had invented and build the family a glass castle they could all live in. The glass castle remained a glimpse of hope, yet sadly proven to be one elusive dream. Mom Rosemary was an idealistic artist and writer. Besides teaching her children to appreciate nature, art, and literature, she had taught them adaptability and instilled in them the spirit of resilience. Once driving through the Mojave Desert, they saw an ancient Joshua tree. Growing through the wind swept years, the tree was permanently bent and yet was still firmly rooted. Later, Walls found a sapling growing not far from the old tree and wanted to dig it up and replant it near their home. I told Mom that I would protect it from the wind and water it every day so that it could be grow nice and tall and straight. Mom frowned at me. You, you'd be destroying what makes it special, she said. It's the Josh's, Joshua tree's struggle that gives it its beauty. This book could well be named the Joshua tree. Rex's alcoholism left the family in dire poverty. In his candid and personal account, Walls remembers that often she had to go without food for days. While in school, she would scavenge garbage cans for leftovers after lunch. Often, they would have no electricity in the makeshift shack they called home or took a shower once a week. Mom was plagued by depression and often lived in a world of her own ideals. Her lazy fare style of child-rearing often left her kids to fend and provide for themselves. Even if she found a job as a school teacher, she would soon grow tired of it and wouldn't get up in the morning. The kids would have to drag her up, usually in vain. I'm surprised the term dysfunctional never occurred in my mind as I read the book. The Walls children were tenacious, resourceful, bold, and confident. They were avid readers and did well in school. What more, they were devoted to each other and loyal to the family. From an early age, they had to learn to handle an alcoholic father, a moody and depressed mother, and mediate their occasional fights and conflicts. The kids had to parent their own misfit mother and father. The walls might be financially crippled. They were able to maintain strong relationships, and an exuberant zest for life. Wall's account is candid and personal, 
poignant with cutting humor. One time in winter when icicles were formed in their kitchen ceiling because the roof was not insulated and there was no electricity in their home, Walls describes her mom's response. All seasons have something to offer, she said. Cold weather is good for you. It kills the germs. How we view the Walls' parents, of course, depends solely on how their daughter presents them in, their, in her memoir. And this is precisely my point. Jeanette Walls has painted a loving picture of her parents despite their failings. She is sympathetic to their struggles with their own demons. Throughout the book, I am touched by her capacity to forgive, to persevere, to hope, and to plan for a better future, not only for herself, but for all of her siblings. The last chapters of the book detail how the author and her siblings pursued a new beginning by, establish, that by establishing an independent life in New York City while still as teenagers. The story of resilience moved on to another phase. Readers are gratified to see a rewarding end to Wall's years of perseverance. Film rights have been optioned for the book. If it is ever turned into a movie, from a visual sense, it is easy to illustrate the hilarious and sensational parts. However, my sincere hope is that the film will keep the integrity and poignancy of the memoir. Often it is not what has happened that is worth telling, but how the narrator sees what has happened that makes the storytelling moving and memorable. In this case, both the what and the how are extraordinary and uplifting. You'll be reading the first 90 pages of The Glass Castle to answer a couple of question, questions. There's a discussion this week. Enjoy reading this fantastic memoir. I guarantee you that it will be an enjoyable read.